Hey guys, it's Rhonda. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to part two of creating my no sew junk journal. I have part one already up. I apologize for how long it has taken me to get part two up. This is the third time I have filmed this video. Uh, third time's a charm, right? So the first time I filmed it as I was creating the signatures and I went to edit it and honestly, it was so boring. Um, it was very short. I should have just done it all in one video. I didn't realize that it was gonna take me no time at all to do these signatures. And as I was watching it back, it just, there was no substance to the video. It was me folding papers and putting them in the journal. So I decided that I would just refilm it and it gave me an opportunity to work in my journal a little bit. And now I can give you guys an update and share with you the things that I like and the things that um, I'm, I'm struggling with a little bit because this is the first time I have used a no sew journal. Um, and if you haven't seen my video, by no sew, what I mean is I've got these elastic bands. This is a silicone rubber band, and I've got three of them here, and that is what is holding my signatures in place. So rather than me going in and sewing in my signatures, they're just held on with these rubber bands. And I'll show you in just a second what I mean by that. Um, if you watched my journal or my video where I created this journal, the only thing that I have done differently is I have added the years on here. So I put 2023 to 2024. I just felt like it needed a little bit of something and I like that I can put the years on there. So let's go ahead and take, talk about the signatures first. So my signatures, again, doing something completely different this time around. I've never done a journal like this. One of the things I realized when I was creating in my last Disney journal, um, and by the way, I will have a flip through of that coming up probably after this video. So keep an eye out for that. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell so you don't miss that at all. But um, one thing I realized when I was doing that is that when I create the signatures in my little golden book junk journals, I use my good pattern paper. And if you guys um, have bought pattern paper lately, you know that pattern paper is expensive right now. And I felt like I was putting the pattern paper in my signatures and then I was covering up the pattern paper because it didn't go with my photos or whatever. And I was finding myself using another piece of pattern paper to cover up the pattern paper that was in my signatures. And I thought, this is such a waste. Why am I wasting my good pattern paper um, only to cover it up. Now, this wasn't so much an issue in my last year's yearly journal, but I did notice it a lot more in my Disney um, journals. So I decided to do something a little bit different this time. And what I decided to do was create my signature pages with just plain white paper. So let me show you what I mean. So all of the papers that I have in here are just plain white paper. And I bought this paper at Michael's, it's a Recollections white paper, and it was a lot cheaper than buying this much pattern paper. So all I have done is cut these down to fit my journal. So if you saw the video, this is an eight by 10 journal. I folded my paper in half so that it was a 12 by 12 paper. So I folded it in half, that gave me a six by 12. And then I just cut a couple inches off the bottom. So these pages are not wide enough to fill an eight by 10, but I'm okay with that. Um, they're six inches and what I can do when I um, go to work on a page, I can find a piece of pattern paper that goes with the photos that I have and I can just attach it to these pages in here. Now the great thing about this is I can leave them this size or I can make them larger. I can make them be a 10 by 12 if I want, or I'm sorry, an eight by 10 if I want to. Um, I can make them to be any size I want to. So that is definitely one of the pros and I will share with you guys how that's working so far. Um, I think I mentioned I've done a couple months in this journal already because I wanted to give it a good go and be able to give you guys an honest opinion of what I think about doing my journal this way. So what I did when I cut my papers is, let me, I'll actually pull one of these signatures out. So this is where, this is where my silicone rubber band is and that's what's holding this particular section of my signatures in. Okay, so let me just pull this out. And throughout this signature, I've got pages of different sizes. 
So if you've watched any of my journal with me videos, you know that I prefer to use pages of all different sizes. I think it adds a lot of different dimension to your book. Um, it, it adds a lot of visual interest as well because you're not looking at pages that are exactly the same size. I just like using different size pages. So I cut my papers down to all different kinds of sizes, varied them throughout my signatures. So I've literally just got like all of these little white pages in here. So you can see, and then they're all folded in half. And then I just literally couldn't be any easier. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide them on to my rubber band. And that signature is done and complete. So you can see why part two originally was not a very exciting video because white pages folded in half slid on the rubber bands. So that's where we're at right now. So again, couldn't be any easier. Let me show you what I have done so far and share with you kind of my pros and cons of using this style of journal. Okay, so I started this with my April and now you can see I left this as an eight by 10, or I'm sorry, this is a six by 10, a six by 10. I've left that just as it was. Um, and I've just done, you know, smaller pages. I've added some stuff in here. Um, all kinds of journaling through here and I've added stuff as, as I went through it. So one of the things that I love about this journal is the fact that I can add and remove pages to my signature as I need to. So a lot of you have wondered how I managed to put the signatures together and have my pictures just work out perfectly. Now in the past, in the journals that I've created where I've sewn in the signatures, I've glued pages together if I realized I had too many pages in the signature or I was gonna have too many pages at the end of my book. I've ended up kind of gluing pages together, um, all different kinds of things. I've added a lot of flips if I didn't have enough pages. The great thing about this is if I get to the middle of my signature and I decide I don't need as many pages, I simply pull these pages out and then I've got less pages in my signature. One thing I have done is, I think it's over here, let me find it, um, right here. I wanted a smaller um, page than what I had in here. So this is where I took an envelope and I slid an envelope in here and I created this page and then over here, I've got the other half of the envelope in this signature somewhere. The, um, the rest of the envelope is in here, right there. So now I've got this in here and so I can, you know, play with my pages and figure out exactly what I need. Now, the nice thing about me being a couple months behind on this is that I know each one of my signatures is gonna hold approximately four months worth of photos. So I am at least four months behind. So I've got my photos printed for this first section of my signature. So my first signature is gonna hold April, May, June, and July. I've got all those photos printed out. And so I know exactly, you know, roughly, I shouldn't say exactly, roughly how many pages I'm gonna need to finish those photos. So what I can do is I'm, you know, I look at it and go, okay, well, I'm not gonna need this much paper to complete this. So now that I'm in the middle of my signature, I can go ahead and pull out the excess pages and then I'm good to go for the rest of the signature. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense for you. But it's it's kind of nice to be able to gauge, oops, I'm gonna need some more pages for this, or I've got, you know, I know that my June has a ton of photos. So I know that I'm gonna need a couple extra pages, so I just folded a couple more and popped them in the middle of the signature. So now I've got room to finish my June and July photos. So right now what I've done is all of April and May, so those are all done and complete. I've got June and July that need to go in here and I should be really good as far as my signature goes. So that is by far the best pro to using a no sew journal is that I can add or take pages away from the signatures. Um, let's see, another thing that I am loving, as I mentioned before, um, I can add my own pattern paper to this. So I am using up a lot of my scraps. Um, rather than using a full sheet of uh, 12 by 12 paper, folding it in here, cutting it down so that it fits, I can just cut you know, whatever size this is. Now, I mentioned this earlier as well, um, I don't have to have my paper be a six by 10. If I want it to be a little bit larger and have it be an eight by 10, I simply cut my pattern paper at an eight by 10. I glue it on here, cut another piece 
um, to, to match another eight by 10 piece, glue that on the back. And now all of a sudden this page is a full eight by 10 and is larger than say the page in front of it. So I love being able to do that. Like I said, I've used a ton of scraps up because I'm not using a full page. I, I really am liking that benefit as well. One thing that I am noticing that I, I am not thrilled about, and I think that this might change as I go through this journal, but right now it's really kind of bugging me. So let me show you quickly. You can see that this, whoops, let me, okay. Here's my rubber band. Here's my first page. So they are kind of wonky and I've been pulling it and I keep pulling it over to get it, you know, back in line so that this is, you know, even with all the other pages and it just keeps sliding back. So what I'm really hoping is that as I work my way through the signature, the pages are gonna bulk out a little bit and then things are gonna kind of get back where they should be. So you can see this page is really off center from my rubber band. And no matter how many times I adjust it and pull this paper over here on this side, it just keeps going back. So I'm hoping that as I get through this, it's going to fix itself, but we'll see. And I'll keep you guys posted. I'll give you, like I said, an honest opinion of what it's like to work in a journal with it like this. The other thing that I'm not liking is that this rubber band is starting to tear my pages up at the very top. So I've had to go in and I ha I'll have to do it on here and just add a piece of tape on there to keep those from splitting anymore. But um, other than that, I really haven't found a whole lot of cons. I'm really loving working in this size. Um, I think that this is kind of the perfect size for um, a yearly journal for me because I do take a lot of photos and do, you know, I do a lot of documenting. The one thing I am noticing with this extra space, and I don't know if it is because of the space or if I just have a lot more stories to tell, I am journaling a whole lot more than I had in the past. Um, almost every single page has, you know, some sort of either hidden journaling or journaling that's, you know, out there. This is a pocket that I added. This whole thing has um, journaling inside of it. Um, I've just added a lot more journaling and I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's because of the space or what it is, or if I just have a lot more that I want to say, but I'm not normally a big journaler and I have found myself journaling a lot through this journal so far. So I'm hoping I keep that up. I, I like the fact that it's, um, you know, that my, my journals have journaling in them and that I'm actually telling a story because it just, that's just not one of my favorite parts of scrapbooking is the journaling. So there you go. That's kind of a part two to this that shares with you how I made my signatures and then kind of an update of where I'm at so far. Really loving it. Like I said, I'll keep you guys posted as to how that's working out for me. But other than that, I think that's all the update and the part two um, to the signature creation that I have for you today. If you have any questions, please leave them for me below. I would love to answer that for you. Um, give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel to follow along with this. I will have some journal with me in this, obviously. Um, I love working in my yearly journal. It's, it is my passion project. So um, I'll be more than happy to share that with you guys. But um, I think that's it for today. So I hope you guys have a great day and stay tuned for more journal videos. Subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.